Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. In this video I want to talk about emo music and I want to specifically talk about the chords that are used in emo music and we're going to be looking at standard tuning uh, for this lesson. We won't be looking at all the different kinds of open tunings. I want to keep that to um, a separate video. Myself, I've always been into uh, emo music. I got into it back uh, probably when I was 14, 15 years old when my friend introduced me to the album uh, 4 Minute Mile by the Get Up Kids and uh, I really enjoyed that album. And then later on a friend introduced me to uh, Frame and Canvas by Braid. So that, that was kind of my early introduction to emo. Then I got started to get into more mainstream kind of emo music. Um, at the time it was popular like bands like you know Funeral for a Friend and uh, My Chemical Romance and all of this uh, fake emo music as it's, uh, it's labelled. But for this video I'll be including all types of emo music as you'll see as we go along because it's not quite common to use standard tuning in a lot of these, uh, these bands. Um, I've tried to make it so we we'll look at examples of bands that have used um, standard tuning and I use standard tuning quite a lot and I'd say a lot of my music is quite emo tinged so I'll show you some ways you can uh, start to use these chords uh, to write kind of emo kind of themed songs. So the first thing I want to talk about is what that characteristic you know, emo sound is when you know you're playing uh, chords. Uh, so I'll show you a few examples and then I'll talk about that afterwards. So if you take the song uh, Forgive Me by the Get Up Kids from the album 4 Minute Mile So it has that character's like tension, you know, kind of um, emo sound, you know, like going on there. And the song uh, Never Will Come For Us um, by Braid from the album Frame and Canvas. <laughs> I think when I first heard that song, I sort of started to fall in love with the uh, the genre. It's just just simple like picking pattern, but you know it's really effective, right? And I love that kind of thing. Uh, so there's that and like and slightly more mathy, but still quite emo tinged. Uh, the band Delta Sleep with the song um, uh, Camp Adventure. <laughs> So what is that characteristic kind of emo sound? Um, you know, it's quite like subtle tension, a bit of sadness, right? It's tinged, um, you know, it has a lot of us hooked, right? But basically between the first here and the major seven, it has that subtle clash, right? Sounds nice within the chord. And that's uh, one of the characteristic sounds of emo music. And like another one would be like, would be that. Sus, sus two sound. So you not got the major third there. So it's neither major or minor. It kind of floats uneasy between. So if you were to play like a, yeah, it doesn't really sound. It sounds too happy, right? But if you're just to play it like, it sounds um. More, more in between, so I'd say that's a characteristic sound of emo. Of course, uh, all the other chords are used within the genre as well. I think that's just what um, kind of defines it a bit more uh, guitar-wise anyway. So that's an introduction into some examples and like what the characteristic sounds of some emo uh, chords are. Uh, so now I want to show you some chords that I like to use and some chords that are actually used quite often by uh, mainstream emo style bands. Uh, I'm going to start off with three notes per string because these sound quite good uh, with a bit of gain. I'm going to start on the A string on the seventh fret, so I'm going to have E. So first we have E sus two, and then we have E five add seven. So this is a major seven, and then we can have 
um, an E major 7 itself. I really like the sound of that chord. Let's go uh, E flat. E flat, add 7, so a minor 7 there. And it can have just E minor 7 itself. E flat minor 7, sorry. So. So let's jump over to the E string and let's um, start from the 8th fret, so C. So we've got C sus 2, C5, add major 7, and then we have C major 7, then we'll do B5, add minor 7, and then a B minor 7. Yeah, so with those just those shapes that I've shown you there, there's there's a lot of songs um, that I use those shapes. For example, we saw on the intro that the Get Up Kicks one, Kids Get Up Kicks, Get Up Kids. So that one there, the A5 add 7, and then you got in the intro there, uh, F sharp minus 7. Yes, that, that sounds good. Um, I use them quite a lot in my own music as well. Um, for example... I've put them in groups of three like this, because if you put a bit of drive on... Let's bring that down a bit. Uh, they can sound really good. I think they sound, not clipping there, just checking. Uh, yeah, sound great like that. You know, they use them a hell of a lot of uh, Cohen Cambria songs as well. Like, if you... So again there as well, you got to C, C5 add 7, and you got a G, uh, so it's 2 there as well, and like... Again, lots more stuff is there. Um, as you can tell, I'm quite a big Cohen and Cambria fan. So this song, uh, probably all cringe at, but uh, funeral for a friend. Um. So you see there, that uh, starts on an E. So it's two. So it's lovely, right? Um, use them uh, quite a lot of my own songs too. So you got minor seven, the major seven, and F F five add seven there. Which sounds very emo-ish, I guess. I really like that. Yes, that's just uh, free note variations there. You know, if you want to step into the uh, extended chord uh, territory, this is where I recommend uh, jumping. A lot of bands will jump to the the open tunings because you get a lot of like freedom. You know, build bigger chords, and you can build like lots of the same note on you know, on top of each other, you know, if you're just using like two notes and you can repeat that like you know, three times and get this really big open chord sound. So I'll show you some uh, extended chords that I like to use, but this, um, this is where I need your help because I was looking at a lot of tabs and a lot of bands that I like and listening to them. And I do hear these extended chords a lot uh, sorry, not a lot, I should say, quite often in some uh, music that I listen to. Um, I'm not sure if it's in standard tuning or not, but I want you to tell me like what bands you know that play in standard that are using these kind of extended chords that I'm going to show you now. So please uh, drop a comment below. 
on that one. So chords that I like to use, we're going to start again from E, and we're going to be on the seventh fret here again on the A string. So I like to use um, E major nines, which sound like this. Uh, got that little slight bit of tension there, the seventh, but we've added the second in the ninth degree there. For minor, I like to use uh, minor seven. That's just the same as that minor seven, the three, but adding the octave in there. Or you can play a minor nine, which sound uh, quite nice as well. And jumping over to the uh, E string here, uh, some chords that I like to use. Uh, I like, if we start with major, let's start on the C again. So, I like C major 9. And I like um, another variation of it, like this. Which sounds uh, less brighter. And then um, I like uh, minor 7, sounds like this. So I put my thumb like that over the top. We can do a minor 11, it's another one I like. If you want to sound jazzy, minor 13. So some things I've written with these chords. And um, another thing, last thing, I uh, something I wrote that's in standard tuning that sounds uh, quite twinkly. Yeah, it's really like that. I think that'll sound nice with like kind of warbly kind of tape echo effects on that, right? Um, so I'll leave it there for the uh, chords and stuff. We've gone on over quite a bit about that. But like I said, um, I need your help because uh, there's a lot of, you know, I use extended chords quite a lot to write kind of emo, kind of tinged math rock and just emo music in general. But um, I don't really know any songs that use extended chords myself. And there's if my friends are watching this, they're probably uh, shouting at me like, you know this song, you idiot. But uh, So that's why I need your help. Uh, what songs do you know of that use um, you know, some kind of extended chords that are in uh, standard tuning, I should say? Uh, so that's probably the reason why a lot of these bands um, you know, are, are going to these uh, different tunings to get you know, these big open chord sounds. And I said naturally they start to fall into the uh, uh, sus kind of sounds and uh, major and minor uh, seven you know, extended chord kind of sounds. So one of the first albums, like I said, that got me into uh, emo kind of styles of music was the um, the Ghetto Kids uh, Four Minute Mile, and my best friend introduced me to this, uh, you know, a long time ago, and I really liked this one. And then later on, it was um, one of my other friends introduced me to the band Braid, uh, the Frame and Canvas, and I really loved that one too. And then like some more mainstream stuff, I guess, would be Jimmy Eat World Futures. I recommend checking that one out if you don't. That's a really good um, kind of mainstream kind of emo rock kind of album. I uh, really love all the tracks on that one. Um, kind of a maffy uh, indie kind of emo album, um, you know, Block Party, Silent Alarm, the, the debut album by them. That's what I really loved as well, and still love it. Uh, got some really good songs on that one. This one, I don't particularly like it too much, but there's a few tracks on it, which is the Funeral for a Friend. It's very, uh, that, the whole scene of um, heavier kind of styles of emo music, right? Uh, yeah, but 
this guilty pleasure, I guess. Um, I got the Get Up Kids Live here, which is this one. You know, I recommend some other CDs, but like I just really, it's quite hard to get a hold of this, so I was happy to to get a hold of that one. Um, this one is a band you probably not heard of, but it's one of my all-time favorites, and it's a band called uh, Racist to April. And this one is the syntax in everything. And I managed to swag this, um, snap, snag this off online, sorry, uh, because it's from 2004. So I had to like use a credit card and they sent it to me. Um, I'm not sure, maybe they're from, from Canada, I, I can't remember, or California or something like that. But it's got all the lyrics and stuff inside, it's very, um, very American football-esque in the, the, cover, the cover style, right? But uh, you can probably find that on like Spotify and stuff, but that's a really good uh, emo kind of. Uh, don't know what I don't know what genre I define it as, but it's very emo. Um, right now, it's uh, Ghost City by Delta Sleep. That's very math, but it's got emo tinged in there, so I really like that. And uh, this album as well. It's one of my favorites. Is Gulfer What Gives. Uh, so that's very emo tinged, some really fantastic, full of passion songs on there. Um, I haven't really got anything more up here, maybe more Dell to Sleep. Uh, but yeah, there's that. There's, I, I, like I said, I tend to go for the uh, emo tinged uh, math rock kind of bands. I think they really uh, captivate me. Um, but what are your recommendations? That's what I want to hear as well. So please leave uh, what you recommend I listen to below. I have listened to quite a few. Uh, emo bands, but there's always those the ones that um, you know I haven't caught on to yet that uh, I should do. So uh, it's been a long video. So if you're still here, thank you very much for sticking around. If you'd like to support me, then you can uh, support me on Patreon. Uh, just think of it as like buying me a quarter of a coffee or a coffee once a month, whatever you uh, donate on there. So I appreciate anything like that. I have merchandise available. Yeah, so. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, all of the content for this lesson I'll put onto my website and you can find a link in the description for that. Um, if you want to know any of the bands that I just mentioned then uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll leave uh, a reply to you there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.